I don't know, we can maybe make uh, this episode more of a uh, generic popuri about tech stuff. This episode is brought to you by the color beige. Tired of everything being yellow, blue, or red? Tired of seeing the same colors everywhere such as purple, pink, or white? Why not give Beige a chance? Hey, by the way, I meant to tell you that I fi finally snapped and uh, bought myself a Surface Go. Well, finally, like it just went out, what, two months ago? Yeah, I don't know. I remember you were traveling to the US and you were like, oh, if you want, I can get you one. <laughs> So, yeah, it was it was two months ago. Yeah, and I was like, no, I still have plenty of time, and then boom. <laughs> so, <laughs> so why? So the reason why is so I uh, for, it replaces my uh, Surface Pro two, and uh, it replaces it quite well. I want something like portable, uh, etc. And the reason why I don't trust my Surface Pro two anymore is because the power button started. Uh, uh, being harder and harder to push, and I'm really scared okay. that it might be. Uh, well, like I need to push it harder and harder for it to take effect, and I'm scared of it like dying down on me. Uh, there, yeah. There's been a, a couple sense. of uh, other quirks, like sometimes the Wi-Fi card breaks, and I just need to reboot it. But yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been using it pretty intensively for five years. I think I bought it in 2013. So I think it's lived a very, very good life. Clearly, that's way too much for any computer ever. Like, I think yeah. the oldest computer I have is like three years old. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling good about the, the, the uh, life uh, length I get out of my devices. <laughs> really maximizing the money, uh, the, my money worth. Yeah. And for a fir like yeah, for a fir second generation surface, like it lasts it lasted long because I don't know, like there was problem of reliability. You know? Yeah, the the first one was really experimental, so it was a bit shitty. The second one was good. The third one, I think they moved to a different uh, hardware supplier or something like that. They tried new stuff and it didn't really work well. And yeah. hopefully now they got their shit together again. But yeah, uh, <laughs> how many Surface Three did you try? Four, I think. Okay, yeah. Like so, it was four, and at, yeah, at the first one, I was like, okay, I'm going back to Mac. You can understand my my reluctance. Like I I know that the Surface Pro two works, uh, so my yeah. my plan was always to buy a second hand Surface Pro two uh, after the my Surface Pro two dies, uh, but the Surface Go seemed too perfect <laughs> for me. So what's the difference? What's the difference, and what do you like? About so it. the main dif the main difference is uh, it's a bit smaller, which is really really great for on the go, and the life changing mm -hmm. difference is USB charging, which means I don't mm -hmm. have to be worried about my battery when I go in flights or in travels. Uh, what do you mean? It's USB C, or it's USB C charging? Yeah, you can charge it with USB C, but that's the whole reason why I got it. I wouldn't have gotten it other way. No, but uh, wait, 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 wait. Does your su power supply is like just a phone power supply, or is it like a? <laughs> uh, I think we can talk about that for for a while, but uh, it turns out that in USB-C you can uh, USB-C supports a wide range of uh, power potential power, so you can charge the Surface Go with a phone charger. Uh, but mm -hmm. obviously, the Surface Go, like when you use it uh, at its full capacity, needs more, uh, but more energy okay. than a, a phone. But in um, in uh, power saving mode, I think you can at least hold and maybe charge a little bit the battery with a phone charger. Okay, have you tried that, or like do you? Yeah, yeah I've that? tried that. I've tried that. Okay. I, I've spent uh, most of like last week measuring the voltage, the watt power of every charger and uh, like every phone consumption that I had at work or uh, in my house. So now I'm uh, I'm a bit of an expert in that area. <laughs> oh, the poor guy sitting next to you. Why? I don't know because when someone like charges phone, he's always rumbling through his bag and like. 
I don't know, he's making me no, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. But I, I'm a decent human being. I arrived early, earlier than usual at work. So that I do that in the morning, half an hour when nobody's there. Okay, okay. And I'm not disturbing my colleagues. Okay. Uh, another big difference uh, between the Surface Go and the Surface uh, Pro 2 is that the, the weakest point, definitely performance-wise, of the Surface Go is the processor, I think. It's like, yeah. uh, I don't remember, an Intel. So Anyway, it's monocore. And you really feel Ooh. it, I, th I, I, I get the feeling, you really feel it in Chrome. Okay, so it's underpowered as fuck. So I, I feel like it struggles more than my Surface uh, Pro 2 from five years ago on Chrome, but uh, it runs like Overwatch or StarCraft better, slightly better, which is really nice for such a portable device. I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Language. Language is an ideal way to communicate between members of a species. When you need to accomplish something bigger than yourself, language is the number one cross-individual coordination mechanism to help you reach for the impossible. Thanks to our millennia of expertise, it only takes a few years to get started. Warning, side effects may include the rise of consciousness. What, what's really nice about this is that the transition to the main topic is really cool because the main reason why I like Surface Go is because I can charge it through USB-C and then we can talk about Clearly. USB-C. That's the easiest transition ever. Yeah. And I wanted to talk about USB-C because it kind of blows my mind that so USB is originally something to send to transmit da data originally between like a mm -hmm. mouse and a computer or two devices or whatever. And nowadays, especially with USB-C, it's become kind of the standard for charging. So for electricity uh, charging, even better than outlets are because all the countries have different outlets, but now we have all USB-C everywhere. And that's kind of like cool, I think. Well, what do you define? Oh. Yeah, first of all, I need to like d define what I mean by standard because uh, in computer science, this is a, a loaded word. Uh, mm -hmm. Because in computer uh, in computer science and like technology, you have like these committees of researcher and uh, and companies that get together to define norms, etc. And they call and that's called standard. But that is not necessarily standard. Like they define standard for some kind of like oh a good example is WebM uh, the the WebM thing. They they have like conventions to define WebM uh, format standard, but not a lot of people use it. People still use GIF. So the de facto standard and by standard meaning the thing that everyone uses. Uh, to send to encode animated pictures is GIF. Whereas my computer science friends would like, uh, like bash my head saying that it's WebM. But that's not what standard is. Standard is the thing that everybody uses, right? In common language. No? Yeah, I... Standard is what allows communication between two entities without extra translation effort. Uh, What's your definition of standard? No, I think like I think I mainly agree with you. Uh, I think like saying that a standard is a standard just because some kind of authority say it's a standard but no one uses it is completely stupid. I think um, so. Yeah, I mainly yeah I'm I'm mainly agree, but I also think that there's a thing about about number of people using it. So I think you're gonna bash me for that, but I think, for example, the lightning port of iPhone is a standard in some sense, meaning you have you have more, for example, all third party, I don't know, like add-on for phones goes, goes with USB-C or USB-A, more USB-A than USB-C and lightning port. And I think there's more add-on for phones on lightning port than USB. 
So then USB so what C or then USB A. A. Just because yeah. iPhone users tend to buy more add-ons for their phones than Android users. So even if there's more Android user, like the market is bigger for for iPhone user. I guess it's true. So for a certain so, definition of standard and for a certain market, it it is uh, like standard. What I don't like about it is not open standard. It's a standard like completely owned by one party. Yeah, that so, I can uh, agree. <laughs> standard doesn't necessarily mean good, and I think yeah. that's a, that's a good, a really good statement to open the discussion on USB C. <laughs> yep. So the the. the the cool thing about the USB-C and is that it's the same outlet for everyone mm -hmm. everywhere. I think like mm -hmm. one of the main reasons is because it's become so is because of uh, European regulations pushing for phone companies to harmonize yep. or something like that. But mm -hmm. so in in practice, it's it's become like so convenient. And, and that's the, the really important thing about standards. Standards are, are convenient, so at some point they become the path of least resistance. And now yep. uh, constructors like Apple and Microsoft make their devices charging by USB-C because it's so convenient. And we have the, the we have this uh, data transfer protocol protocol data transfer uh, outlet that has become mm -hmm. the power supply. Uh, uh, standard in the world the bad thing about that is that my understanding is that it's loosely defined like usb-c can support a wide range of power uh, mm -hmm. most phones are if i'm not mistaken like 12 watts 2.4 volt for 5 amperes yeah 12 watts 3.1 no I would have said 3.1, but whatever, we'll pass. Well, that's not the average I measured in, <laughs> in all the chargers <laughs> I found lying around. Okay. I think the, yeah, the, the default is 12, 12 watts, and like big devices need obviously more than that. My Pixel mm -hmm. Book at work or my, uh, my Surface Go mm -hmm. prefers uh, bigger, uh, more, prefer more power, and it's very easy for the consumer to uh, buy the cable, buy the charger, and are noticing that hey, uh, actually, it's not like the right power for my thing because it looks good, yeah. but it's not. Uh... And I, th I think so, that's the main main beef you have with you with USB-C. So that's my biggest one, but like it's not. Yeah, it, it's like the basis of my run. Meaning, the first thing is it's the same form for everything, but it can do ten different things. So yeah, as you say, it can do power supply, it can do data transfer, but it can do also lots of different things. It can also be a HDMI like cable. What? It can also be a DVI cable. It can also <laughs> be a Thunderbolt cable. It can also be uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is that because and people don't want to make ports on their devices, so there's only one port and you have to fit everything in? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. It's just like, if you buy, and like, it can be all of those without, but it can also not be all of those. So when you buy a, a USB-C cable, you don't know if it's only a power supply. You don't know if it will handle data. You don't know if it will be a Thunderbolt 3, like a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C. And so now we have, we have like a MacBook, like MacBook Pro have all USB-C USB with Thunderbolt 3. So you can handle like display. But the thing is USB-C without Thunderbolt 3 can also under display, but only a GMI display, not for not for K display, I think. Like <laughs> it's only Thunderbolt. And like even I don't know, but I follow the news every day. And the so that's one of the worst thing about that cable. And the second worst thing is is okay, it's so it's the same cable for all of these things, and it's not written of it. So, okay, it can be the same form, like, who cares? Like, okay, that's practical. If you have all the best cable, like, it's all Thunderbolt 3, all data, all charging. Who has that but, kind of money? <laughs> but, like, exactly, like, the cable costs, 40, like, 40 euros or 40 dollars. 
And so even you... even then, you you can't really do that because you want probably like a long cable for your travels or something. And yeah. if you want a long cable that does display, it's like super expensive. So you probably want to have your short cable that does dis that does display and your long cable that does charging in an airport. And like the thing is like I don't see why like. Because USB-C, if I understood well, USB-C has been created from scratch as a standard. Like from the beginning, they were like, okay, let's do this. So I don't understand why they didn't say like, okay, it handled that, 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 that. Like if it's not that, it's not a USB-C. And, and even if they didn't do that, why it's not written on the fucking cable? I've never seen a USB-C cable where information was written on it. Like so... just put the information on it, like print it. I can, I can, solve the problem. Yeah. I can actually answer part of these questions because okay. that is like typical stuff you see as software engineer. <laughs> uh, is when you start a new system, when you start a, a programming a new system, you you start thinking about all the uh, stuff it could do. And you want mm -hmm. your new system. You, basically, when you start doing a new system from scratch, you have you know that the system you had before is not enough currently and you don't want to okay. be in that uh, situation back in uh, in two years of time so okay. th that's the symptom called premature optimization or yagna Ye you ain't gonna need that uh, which <laughs> is which uh, which is a design uh, fallacy kind of uh, that when you design a system you want to make it like super uh, flexible for all kind of use cases in the future that you may need uh, to avoid having to restart from scratch. But the downside is you become uh, like, you invest a lot of effort in making something that may never be used. And uh, you're shooting all your arrows in like all the different directions uh, very loosely. And you end up with something that could do all that. I think the reason why okay. they ended up like that is because they wanted to reduce the number of ports on devices. <laughs> and so they're, they're saying like, well, yeah, but we need one port that can do everything. <laughs> but uh, I don't mind having one port that do everything. Like I would love to have one port that do everything. But for, first, like, apparently they can't fucking do that without it being like costing 40 bucks. And secondly, apparently, like no one can agree to implement that everywhere. Meaning right now, like nothing is compatible with USB-C. So it's kind of okay for, I don't know, Microsoft or Mac to go out with their product saying, oh, we're only USB-C future. But like right now, it just like, it just doesn't work. Someone has to lead the charge. For, for, for if nothing more, the, the electricity part, the charging, I think works with like everything. <laughs> but USB-A was doing that well as well. Like we well, USB-A is that. very limited in uh, in power. Oh, is it? Yeah, they can't. Uh, I don't think they can handle more than twenty watts or something. You can't really charge a, a Surface Go with that. But I, I don't remember exactly. Okay, so a Lightning port would have been enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's like a a lot of good intentions gone wrong, <laughs> like a clickbait video on YouTube. Um, I don't know, like what, what I do like is that apparently, uh, Apple is going, like, is going to use USB-C everywhere. The new iPad is USB-C and not landing port. The new Mac is all like USB-C. I uh, kind of like knowing that everything that you will buy will be compatible for, for everything Apple and for everything Microsoft and for everything Android. So that is kind of nice. Mm, yeah, maybe we're just in a in a tough transition period, but no, it, it seems more expensive to make cables that can do video well. So maybe it's, the price will drop and we can have all cables be good cables. But no. if we can't do that, there will still like be two levels of cables at least, and it's still going to be messy. And even if you print it on the cable, which they really should do, and why do they, why don't they do that? I don't know. Laws are hard. Well, maybe uh, maybe it's more like languages. Like they want international stuff. Like Thunderbolt is a like wait 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 Thunderbolt is a standard. Voltage is a standard. 
Uh, and what else can it do? I think the other thing is always in the cable, like it's turned out across all USB-C cable. So they can just put the voltage and Thunderbolt 3 or not, and that would be enough, I think. Yeah, but so that would be enough for us, but would it be like ideal? Would it be enough for like the average consumer? Would it be ideal for my mom and when she goes to the store and she doesn't know anything about tech? Uh, that she doesn't get like scammed because she bought the wrong cable or wrong charger. I don't. I don't think we, with such a complex system that tries to do everything, I'm not sure we can end up in a situation where it's like consumer friendly. <laughs> yeah. So that's like. So that's why it's a bullshit cable. I'm sorry, but like, if every consumer can't understand your cable, like your cable is not good. Like every con like it's a fucking cable. Like, what does humanity, like, what does that mean for humanity if, like, humanity can't understand their own cable? <laughs> <laughs> well, it means, uh, it means we're doomed, but you know my opinion on that. <laughs> but one nice thing about you, like, I want you to talk about my nice experience from two days ago with USB-C. So I wanted to write, to write a thing. I, done that, I only had my big computer, so I didn't really want to bring that to Starbucks. But I had a keyboard, a USB-A keyboard, keyboard, but I had also a dongle for my MacBook. USB-A USB C. Yeah. yeah. So I use it and it worked completely fine. My, like, my Android <laughs> device was like, yeah, it's a keyboard. Like, I was completely amazed by how easy it was. Like, nothing to install, nothing to fiddle around, just like... Boom, dongle, keyboard, start writing, work perfectly. Yeah, I guess one big, uh, one big advance with USB-C is that it's a relatively small outlet that is on yeah. phones, so you can start plugging peripherals on phones very easily. Mm. And if the operating system is good, <laughs> it, it just works right away, which is not a given yeah. if you... If you, like, if you had told me that, I, I don't know if Android recognizes keyboards by default. Apparently it does, which me is neither. nice. And they recognize mouse as well. And there's actually a little mouse. Wait, on is your there screen. a mouse on Android? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. And the mouse actually appears on your screen. It's like the cutest thing. I mean, it's maybe it's kind maybe, of useless, but it's okay. Maybe it comes from tablets. I can see people using mouse maybe. on tablets more than phones. <laughs> a mouse on a phone is a bit weird. I don't know. The phones are so big right now that <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised that people are using it as a main. Maybe you are just uh, like uh, struggling in the direction to have. Like peripherals, you can you can use everywhere, and devices like everything's compatible with everything. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah that would be that will be the, that would be the one of the only things that go toward an actual standard. Yeah. But, so uh, you, you can see, you see, it's not all bad. You can see like definitely like good uh, good uh, good things. But yeah, I think like trying to put video and charging and data on the same cable and maybe, audio and audio maybe it's just maybe it's because it's still a bit expensive to do video cables maybe yeah. uh, it's going to be cheaper like, <laughs> next and everything will be good cables maybe we'll see. before stopping that conversation i think mm -hmm. it will be a bit of a shame to talk about cable that long without talking about the jack cable <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't know I should bring tissues. <laughs> because I'm sorry, but the death of the jack cable is completely linked with USB-C. I don't think jack is dead. Jack is maybe dying, but... Well, jack will be clearly dead in a few years. Well, if you put audio in USB-C, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, there's no jack in like all the new phones, except for Samsung, because Samsung is compatible with everything that they're like. Yeah. That they're and I don't policy, suppose the whole of mankind will resist and buy uh, not new phones. <laughs> That's I mean, just that me. won't work, clearly. Yeah. And like the excuse is it takes too much place on in the phone. 
Like, what are they talking about? Well, <laughs> I, Jack like... has been around for a while, so maybe it is not very optimized on a hardware perspective. I don't know enough about hardware to know that, but I'm willing to, <laughs> to accept that. If you tell me that, you're yeah, sure, why not? But it was a bit uh, magical I mean... that you can take any kind of, like, either headphones or mic and just plug it and it works without software because it's just like everything is uh, analog. Yeah. But... I mean, if, if USB-C analog, does the same thing. Uh... I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't really care. Like, the thing is, I don't really care about the jack cable because all my headphones are Bluetooth. So <laughs> saying the guy who is that use uh, <laughs> jack headphones right now. Yeah, but you were struggling so much to record this podcast. Yeah. But the one that like I use mostly are Bluetooth, so I don't really care. But seeing that, for example, on the new iPad, there's no jack, and the excuse is like there wasn't any place. Like, are you fucking joking? The thing is bigger than, I don't know, than, than five phones. Like, you could find two millimeters to put a jack cable. Sure. Sure, but what they like the actual reason and the, the the pretended reasons are often different too. But I don't understand the actual reason though. The actual like, reason what is, is actual like reason? kill Jack. But why? To move everything to USB C, probably. So the no 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 but the 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 thing is like uh if you're using analog signals there doesn't need to, to be processing to be uh, to, to use it. Yeah. And if you don't have processing, you don't need software. And if you don't need software, uh, if you do need software, so uh, yeah, let's take the opposite uh, approach. If you do need software, you could add uh, special treatments. You could add ads, restrictions, partnerships, all these kind of good things that capitalism loves. And this is why standards like RSS uh, have been killed by companies too, because it's like raw text. And like in raw text, you can't inject ads, inject like stuff to spy on your people. You can't control your people in the same way. Where you have software running to interpret the audio output, you could control it, stop it if you want. So that's a very strong incentive for companies to to abandon analog because they are losing some sort of control. I don't know if that's like uh, conscious or like implied. <laughs> but it's it is true that like you, you it's a bit redundant to have USB C and Jack if uh, if both except that you can be... charge your phone while listening to music. Yeah, and another thing, uh, like I think the main competitor of Jack is not USB-C, it was Bluetooth, and people are trying to uh, push for wireless. Uh, why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because you, don't because know. it's I... software and you can make partnerships. <laughs> no, I can see, like the thing with Bluetooth is maybe a wide right? maybe it's for like this kind of shitty capitalistic stuff. But also not having a cable is super, like it's just a nice feeling. I mean, with Bluetooth, you can uh, you can sell Bluetooth earbuds for like fifty dollars each or whatever, and uh, replace them because you lose them easily. Whereas with a cable, if someone tries to sell me earbuds for fifty dollars, I'm gonna <laughs> slap him. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't think you can. I think the Apple. The Apple AirPods are one hundred and fifty dollars, and I don't okay. think you can buy only one. I think you need to buy them in bundles. Oh God! So the price, the price for for Apple. I have a friend that worked there, not a friend, like a colleague. Well, a l old colleague that works now at Apple, and he was telling me the story of how the iPad is priced now. I just well, an iPad is sold approximately once every four, three to four years. And the phone is sold every year, every year, every two years. So to keep our average selling price per year, we needed to bump it up. <laughs> and that's basically how it was done. And wait, yeah, why, why yeah, there's not so that weird. much market research about price. That is so weird. That, that is such a, a, a fun a fun way to look at it because that means they are compensate they, they are maintaining their targets by increase by 
playing on the price instead of playing on yeah. increasing the user base, which actually no, okay. explains a lot. <laughs> no, it's genius. Like uh. the iPhone, the iPhone unit sale has been completely flat for three years. The iPhone average price has been completely rising. It's I think 50% higher than three years ago. And the revenue, the revenues that they got from the from iPhone in the last three years have risen by 29%, if I remember well. We, with a unit sell completely flat. That is wonderful. But so yeah, that that really shows that that's your answer. Why death of Jack? Why then is the the answer to any que any question like that is always because you can make money out of that because you can create a need because you can like foster sales and economic growth. That's the currency everyone's going for. That's a bit. <laughs> well, that's capitalism. It has upsides too. Yeah, we really need to do. I think we will do a special episode about why capitalism suck. Like a six hours episode. <laughs> yeah, that would be original. I'm sure nobody's done it before. <laughs> we could have, we, we should try something like more personal, a more personal take on it, like an absurd exaggeration or something like that. Well, that's for another time, but like yeah. not tomorrow. No, <laughs> never tomorrow. I think it's a good time to close. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> no, we should close by inviting all our listeners to send us uh, their questions, comments, and uh, ideas that they want to discuss about on Reddit and Twitter. So yeah, ask any of your questions. Follow us on Reddit at Not Daily Podcast or slash r slash NDP. I think. No, it's not daily um, because NDP is the Canadian thing, like the Canadian party. What? Our competitors. <laughs> we looked at that. Okay. See you not tomorrow. <laughs> See you not tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye.